us come back, nothing to talk to uh, followers. When your brother is producing something, are you patronizing your brother? Listen to Planet 101.1 FM News at 7 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. With an. Indies Aquarium State Government condemns gruesome murder of Miss Inu Bongo Moren by assailant. Journalists task on factual reportage for public good as 2021 World Press Freedom Day is marked. Minister of Labor and Employment threatens legal actions against state governors not paying new minimum wage. On the foreign scene, U.S. sets to hold talks with World Trade Organization on COVID-19 vaccine distribution. It's post Naomi Osaka out of Madrid open after offset loss to Carolina Muchova. The details coming up shortly. Good afternoon. Welcome to the news on 101.1 FM. With you, I am Samuel Williams. The Aquabum State Government has condemned the gruesome murder of Miss Inu Bongo Moran, who is said to have been abducted, raped, assaulted, and eventually murdered by one Udwak Frank Akban. The Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Comrade Inu Bong, in a statement made available to newsmen, said the news, which was conveyed by the police, is heart wrenching and most disturbing considering the age of the persons involved. According to the statement, the state governor, Rudumi Manuel, while thanking the police for the arrest and interrogation of the suspect, has communicated to the police hierarchy of the state his desire for the full administration of justice to the culprit and all other persons involved in the crime. In a statement, the state government commiserates with the deceased family on the painful loss and prayed God to comfort them. <music> Meanwhile, as World Press Freedom Day is commemorated today, journalists have been charged to continue upholding the ethics of the profession while consciously reporting factual stories devoid of emotional undertones, with a further call on government to always uphold press freedom. And speaking with Planet News, Akwaibom State Chairman of the Nigeria Union of Journalists, NUJ, Akwaibom State Chapter, Amos Etuk, said, Press freedom is sacrosanct for the growth and development of society, adding that the World Press Freedom Day celebration is important as it gives journalists opportunity to reassess the relationship between the press as a fourth state of the realm and other components of society. Because it's our most important day, it is set aside to celebrate the strength of the media and also consolidate on our ideologies because it gives us the opportunity once more to reassess the press freedom in Nigeria, Akwaibum State in particular, how we have been able to fare over the years and what it has been today and what hopefully it will be. We work within the ethics of this very noble profession. Comrade Amos, who evaluated the significance of this year's theme being information as a public good, said the theme's aptness is timely, considering the country's current perilous star in terms of the ravaging insecurities and economic downturns. It took charge media workers to sustain the temper of quality reportage by continually being the consciousness of society and holding government accountable at all times. Media workers can sustain the tempo by drawing the line between emotions and facts, being strong agenda setters, holding government accountable at all times, standing by the truth, never being intimidated, and above all, setting the agenda for national unity, peace, and love. Continue to empower ourselves in terms of human capacity development, uh, workshops, seminars to upgrade our intellectual depth in everything we do. We are emboldened by the Constitution and we will stand firm in everything we do in achieving our set targets in line with the ethics of our profession. 3rd May acts as a reminder to governments of the need to respect their commitment to press freedom and is also a day of reflection among media professionals about issues of press freedom and professional ethics. The day is also set aside as remembrance for those journalists who lost their lives in pursuit of a story. Away from that down, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has decried the attack on its office in the Sienedim local government area for Kwaibom State. A saying if the trend is left unchecked, it could derail its preparations ahead of the 2023 general elections. 
I make like a statement by the National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Eradication Committee, Barrister Festus Okoye, said its resident electoral commissioner, REC, for Aquaibum State, Barrister Mike Guinea, had reported that its office in the Senate local government area had been set ablaze. According to him, items destroyed include 345 ballot boxes, 135 voting cubicles, megaphones, water tanks and office furniture, adding that the police, which has also been battling with attacks on its facilities and personnel in the area, is aware of the incident and has commenced an investigation. The Commission, however, assured Nigerians that they will leave no stone unturned to recover from the incident in Aquabum State as they continue to prepare for all electoral activities. <laughs> From the national scene, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngege, has threatened legal actions against state governors and other employers not paying the new minimum wage. As speaking in an interview, Ngege said negotiations were ongoing between him and Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubo Kamalami, over instituting legal actions against governors who have faulted it and paying the new minimum wage. I'm going, I'm negotiating with the Attorney General of the Federation. The law permits me to take them to court. It's there in the law. I can take any employer, any employer to court. If governors have immunity, I can decide and start from, uh, from the Secretary to Government, Head of Service, and go down to members of the State Executive Council, take them all to court. The minister said state governors not paying the minimum wage were breaching the law of Nigeria. This is a national law that says what you pay to the lowest paid em employee worker in your establishment. State governments are employers. Private sector people, USC, banks, and the rest of them all are private employers. All of them are in this basket. They are caught in, this, in the web of this law until repealed. So for today, any state government or employer that goes and be negotiating minimum wage, like some of them are doing with, with their unions, they are running foul of the law. And Section 33 of the Act says anything you are doing in that direction is not unfold. Any agreement you reach there is not unfold. Now, President Bowari had in April 2019 signed the minimum wage bill into law. By the provisions of the law, all employers in the country are expected to pay their workers not less than the stipulated amount, which is 30,000 naira. <laughs> From the power sector, the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, has approved the new Extraordinary Tariff Review Applications, Performance Improvement Plan, PIP, and Capital Expenditure, CAPEX, for electricity distribution companies, DISCOs, effective from July 1, 2021, to 30th June 2026. And this was contrary to earlier positions of the Minister of Power, Engineer Sally Maman, who at the weekend allayed consumers' fear there will be no significant tariff increase. However, the neck orders issued to the different discos were about applications for extraordinary tariff review, performance improvement plans, and capital expenditure for the next five years. The order noted that under the Power Sector Recovery Program, PR or PSRP, it is envisaged that the Commission would implement a robust tariff review process aimed at improving performance in the Nigeria electricity supply industry. <music> Away from that, the federal government says it is determined to strengthen the secondary health care sector and reform the tertiary health institutions across the country. The Minister of Health, Professor Sage Ehaniri, who said that these are the 61st Annual General Conference an annual delegates meeting of the Nigeria Medical Association enemy in George Platy State observed that the country's health system has a long way to go in meeting the demands of Nigerians. He commended the resilience of Nigerian doctors despite the country's fragile health care system, noting that they continue to rise to the challenge during disease outbreak as witnessed in the coronavirus or COVID-19. The minister implored the support of enemy in the revitalization of the healthcare sector to deliver a system that is responsive to the needs of Nigerians. You're listening to the news on 101.1 FM. Let's take a breather and bring you more.
for the foreign sports and entertainment scenes. Let's with us. So, my son, welcome to the Kalangulu Shrine. The gods are with us. What can I do for you? Baba, the wind do me oh. Ah. And I even sick, self. I think say him give me HIV. Eh? No. What, what's this you mean, Baba? No way anybody fits you switch give you HIV. If anybody tell you that one, na lie them talk. Because which no fit give person HIV. No matter how the wind strong, nobody fit give or carry HIV from witchcraft. Thanks for staying with us. On a foreign scene, a top United States trade representative is set to begin discussions with the World Trade Organization, WTO, about how to more widely distribute COVID-19 vaccines as a country faces increasing pressure to help other nations get much needed jabs. White House Chief of Staff Ron Klein says the U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai would hold talks with the WTO on how they can get the vaccines more widely licensed and more widely shared. The U.S. President Joe Biden's administration has reportedly faced calls to waive intellectual property rights on much-needed COVID vaccines to allow more countries to manufacture doses. The U.S., which has the most coronavirus cases and death in the world, a spread of vaccinations of his own population this year, with nearly 56% of adults receiving at least one jab to date. The sports now second-ranked player Naomi Osaka is out at the Madrid Open as Carolina Muchova won 6-4, 3-6-6-1 in the second round on Sunday. Muchova is through the deciding set to end a third win against a top-10 opponent this year. The 20th ranked Czech was a semi finalist at the Australian Open, which was won by Osaka in February. Osaka was coming off a quarter final loss to Maria Sakari in Miami. Mucheva next faces 16 seed Sakari, who defeated Annette Kontavit 6 3 6 1. Anastasia Pavlichunka beat six seeded Karolina Pliskova 6 love 7 5, while fifth seeded Arena Basabalenka. Defeated Daria Kasakina 6 3 6 3. In the men's draw, 11 seeded Denis Shapovalov won 90% of his four serve points to beat Dusan Lajevic 6 1 6 3 and reach the second round, while American Tommy Paul defeated Pedro Martinez 6 4 7 5. From the entertainment scene, American actor Leonardo DiCaprio is set to star in an English-language remake of the film, Another Round. The Hollywood legend is reportedly being lined up to star in the Thomas Vinterberg's movie, which had originally starred Mads Mikkelsen in the same role in the Danish version of the film. The movie reportedly follows the story of four teachers, all who work at a school in Copenhagen and are looking for some excitement in their lives. And that's been the news on 101.1 FM. But before we go, a recap of the major stories. I've told you the Aquabam state government has condemned the gruesome murder of Missy Niubongo Moran, who is said to have been abducted, raped, assaulted and eventually murdered by one Udrak Frank Akban. As World Press Freedom Day is commemorated today, journalists have been charged to continue upholding the ethics of the profession while consciously reporting factual stories devoid of emotional undertones with a further call on government to always support press, press freedom. The Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, has threatened legal actions against state governors and other employers not paying the new minimum wage. On a foreign scene, we told you the top United States trade representatives is set to begin discussions with the World Trade Organization about how to more widely distribute COVID-19 vaccines as the country faces increasing pressure to help other nations get the much needed jabs. And in sports, we reported second-ranked Naomi Osaka out of Madrid Open as Carolina Muchova won 6 4 
in the second round on Sunday. Now, for comments and coverage of your newsworthy events, you can call our newsroom on 0812 770 Visit our website on planet101fm.ng. Follow us on Twitter at planet underscore 101 FM. And also like our Facebook page at planet 101 FM. We you. The news was edited by Anthony Essen. But just before we end the news, always remember that in the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. Do not give up. I am Samuel Williams. Good afternoon and happy public holiday. Ladies and gentlemen.